All right, we're going to be talking about problem solving now. And uh, problem solving is something that we all have to do. It uh, isn't exactly the same thing as the dreaded word problems that uh, we have in math, although it can include them. Uh, what's more important than that is for us to understand generally what a problem actually is and some basic ways to solve it. So, uh, according to your text, if you take a look at your text, all right, it says that a problem is a situation that involves a question that represents a challenge for the individual. So it is a pro not a problem if you can just easily solve it. So, for example, uh, asking me 3x equals 18, uh, you know, what's x, is not a problem. Why? I can automatically tell you that x is equal to 6, and uh, there were very, very few uh, actual problem-solving skills that had to be uh, done by it. I've seen this situation so many times with, uh, with a lot of equations that, for me, they are no longer problems. might be a problem for a young person who's never seen it before, uh, but uh, the idea is that uh, the situation is not a problem for me. It doesn't represent a challenge for me. And uh, a problem can't immediately uh, be answered by uh, just routine procedures. I mean, so for example, uh, you go into, into a store and you say, I have a problem, I need to return uh, this uh, that I bought that doesn't fit. Well, uh, generally speaking, that's really not a problem unless they have a procedure which says you can't return things. Okay. Um, perhaps you don't have the receipt, in which case they might have to have some other procedures go into effect, things like this. That's really not a problem. If there are procedures in place, Read that readily available uh, to uh, allow you to solve things. And uh, by the way, a, a problem isn't a problem unless you accept it. All right. So uh, if I tell my uh, uh, some my son that I need him to figure out how to uh, how to build or construct a particular uh, item with a, uh, a well, I'd like to build a, a shelter for my dogs where there's just a post in the middle and uh, an overhang and I want the, uh, the overhang uh, to uh, support everything for the dogs and I don't want it to uh, shelter for the dogs and I don't want anything else. Well, if my son says I can't do it, well, it's not a problem for him because he hasn't accepted it. It doesn't bother him one little bit. So, uh, now that we've gotten that out of the way, we need to ask ourselves, well, what is a uh, problem and what can we, uh, how can we start uh, dealing with problems? Well, problem solving is, first of all, a process. And although we would like in mathematics to come out to some kind of solution, uh, getting that end number is not, the, is not the whole thing for problem solving. What we really, really want is for the students to realize that there is a mode of thinking, a way that they can approach uh, uh, things that they don't know in order to win the mastery. And uh, in view of this, a uh, lovely gentleman by the name of George Polya, uh, who was a Hungarian mathematician, uh, produced a four-step method for problem solving. Uh, very, very nice, and uh, we're going to review it here. Okay. And uh, the first thing that Polya said in uh, doing this idea of problem solving is he said you need to uh, understand the problem. Now, this is a big deal, 
okay, understand the problem. Uh, I'll just think about it. How many times have you ever made a mistake on a test because you answered a problem before you'd actually read it? Or, uh, perhaps as in my case, okay, the car breaks down. And I think it's one thing when it is actually uh, something else. Easy enough to do. I don't know much about cars. Okay. Or, um, well, here's the thing. Okay. How about going on? How about dieting and losing weight? You can see uh, I'm a very well rounded person and uh, it would really do me a lot of good to lose some weight. Well, there is a problem, okay? And in order, if I'm going to solve that problem, I need to understand it. And it's not going to be just by trying to deny myself of. Uh, a little bit with a few meals. Okay, it's going to have to be something that is uh, considerably more involved that way because the problem is not an easy problem necessarily. It is a complex situation as it is with most people because our lives are, are rather complex. And so uh, understand the problem. Understanding the problem involves reading it. It involves finding out what it is a about the situation that is given, you know, what information is given, what information isn't given, what is it you're trying to get to, what background information does the problem actually assume that you already know or are aware of? Are there any formulas or things like this that should be brought into play? You need to understand the problem. If you don't understand the problem, you're not going to get it solved. Now well, the second part then uh, uh, for uh, Poise for Step Method is to uh, devise a plan. Now, in uh, looking at uh, at problem solving, okay, uh, if you do not devise a plan, you're likely to go at things rather haphazardly. A haphazard approach. Uh, does two things. It helps ensure that you get the problems wrong most of the time. Okay. And it takes too much time for you to get anything practically done. Um, I know some people who, uh, you know, when they're test taking, they, they just sort of haphazardly jump here and there. They don't have any, uh, any real plan to it. And um, because essentially they're panicking so they're really not uh, not approaching the test in a, in a profitable manner. Um, in uh, dieting, for example, all right, devising a plan is essential because if you don't have a plan to take care of it, well then, well, what is it the, the site saying? If you aim at nothing, you're sure to get it. Um, and, uh, uh, oh, if we're dealing with problems in the economy, all right, say, say your own personal economy, and uh, there's some things that you need to do in order to address the budget. If you do not devise a plan, all right, as to, uh, as to what to do in order to address those issues, then you're never going to get them addressed. Um, far, too, uh, far too easy to make mistakes. Well, you can devise a plan, but unless you uh, carry out the plan, it is uh, never going to, to get done. Um, uh, carrying out the plan uh, is important. Now, the examples of devising a plan, but not necessarily carrying it out, uh, can be found in, I oh, say, an example in politics today. The EPA, under the direction of whoever uh, uh, has taken on the position that less regulation is is good, you know, whatever is good for business, is the best thing, you know, regardless of uh, what people think about uh, the environment. Okay, and so uh, they've been using certain things like. Uh, the Endangered Species Act. And while they will put the species like uh, the polar bear 
uh, on the endangered species, they also address it with certain caveats, which essentially say, yeah, but this doesn't really mean anything. You know? uh, they're on the Endangered Species Act, but that doesn't mean that we're going to do things that will harm the economy in order to uh, in, in order to preserve them. We're going to, you know, we'll we'll try to make some efforts so long as it's more convenient to do so, but. Uh, if it becomes uh, very inconvenient to, to do so, then uh, that the, the other considerations will override that. Well, uh, environmentalists have gotten upset because they say that that kind of an approach contravenes the law. It doesn't do what Congress intended. So here was a you know, devise a plan, okay? But then things aren't being carried out, which means that things don't get done. Uh, you may have some other uh, issues, whether you agree with the polar bear issue or not, uh, you know, or how polar bears are being handled or not. That doesn't really matter. The idea is that we have to carry out a plan if we're going to solve the particular uh, problem. And then, uh, after a while, we really need to look back or to, uh, or to evaluate, do some sort of assessment in order to find out whether or not what we have done in carrying out the plan is actually working. Okay. And so uh, one of the problems uh, that uh, Beijing had for the Olympics was the problem of air quality and pollution. Okay. So uh, they devised a plan. They would restrict uh, motor vehicle uh, access. And for a few weeks, uh, they cut down on motor vehicles severely, all right, uh, within the city. And yes, indeed, they carried it out, okay? And yes, indeed, air quality did come down a bit. But it didn't come down enough. And so when they looked back, they realized that more needed to be done. So they went back to this stage and they said, what other uh, things are contributing to the problem? And so when they look at this, they said, well, we've got some industries close by that are fairly big polluters. And so they shut those things down in order to be able to try to mitigate uh, the air quality problem uh, for the Olympics. So uh, in doing this, uh, you look, you go back and you take a look and see whether or not you solved the problem. If you haven't, you go back to the beginning, okay, and you start the process over again. Now maybe, perhaps, sometimes it's just an error in execution. You haven't carried it out uh, properly. This often happens with students, say, when solving certain problems of a routine nature. They make uh, some sort of addition, subtraction, multiplication error, something like that, all right? And then they, they get the answer wrong. Well, uh, you might be able to catch an error in execution by looking back. If you don't look back, you don't know that you made the error in execution. Uh, or possibly, in uh, perhaps some other things, it might be in the problem of devising a plan. A lot of students have problems with uh, certain aspects of problem solving and word problems in multiple stages because they don't realize that when they get to the end of one stage, they haven't solved the problem. So they get halfway through and then they stop. Well, uh, what does that mean? Essentially, uh, they didn't carry out the plan. In fact, they didn't really even devise the plan properly because if they devised the plan properly, somehow or another constructed it so that it was able to be understood and seen, all right, then uh, they would have had a better time carrying it out. Polius four-step method is uh, really, really good for a lot of things. It's good for life, uh, basically. Uh, it's more than mathematical. It's perfectly good for mathematics and in fact works uh, just about everywhere. So we'll be talking more about Polius four-step methods as we uh, go into doing uh, more problem solving. And uh, I look forward to it.